cities that don't have any freeways at all, they don't really have big traffic problems. Like Vancouver, British Columbia, they don't have any freeways at all in the whole city. And it works really well. And so the freeways do a lot of damage. If you look at the real estate anywhere near a freeway, almost always it's degraded. You'll get like surface parking lots or you have buildings that have high vacancy rates, no uh, walking. Because it's really hard to design a freeway that would look good in a city. In 1922, when Corbusier, the great modernist architect, did his drawing, The City of Tomorrow, which proposed the idea of great separated highways and cities, it's sort of a utopian dream to be able to drive without ever having to slow down. It's just when you're in the city, it's the complexity of the city. If you superimpose on that a rural style, great separated superhighway, it creates a lot of unintended side effects. Just take, for example, the West Side Highway in New York. And a uh, cold December morning in 1973, I got a call. I was a junior engineer at the old New York City Traffic Department, and the entire West Side Highway collapsed at Ganswort Street. It was built in the late 20s and then fell down in 1973 and fell down again in 1975. And ultimately, after about a 15-year struggle, they decided not to build it back and they just put in West Street. So neighborhoods like Tribeca and Chelsea and Battery Park had the benefit of being able to see the river. I had to handle the traffic. That was my assignment, figure out where did the traffic go. And what I found out is the traffic was able to take uh, different paths. Things didn't get worse on all the other routes that had to pick up the slack. I don't hear anybody advocating uh, building the West Side Highway again. Same thing happened with the Embarcadero in San Francisco and the central artery in San Francisco. They took down two freeways that had been damaged by the earthquake. In both cases, the traffic distributes better. Real estate values were improved, and the population that lives around the area where those roads were has gone up. The Embarcadero, which was a boulevard for a long time in San Francisco until they ruined it in 1951 when the Embarcadero was built, it's restored. It's just like it was before, maybe even better as the streetcar, it has the palm trees along it. We're helping local groups in Seattle try to eliminate the Alaskan Viaduct, which is a freeway right in front of the waterfront. We're working in New Orleans to restore the Claiborne Avenue. It's got an elevated freeway that covers up the whole street, and it, it really ruined one of the great boulevards in New Orleans. It had about 200 businesses before it was turned into a freeway in 1966 and now it has like 25. And now we found that we don't need it as a highway to go east and west. We don't need it for interstate traffic. It's too expensive to keep up and we'd be much better off if we took it down. This will be what was regarded as the single post-Katrina move that most improved the beauty of New Orleans. We're working in Buffalo to help people tear down the Skyway. Buffalo's highways have had a profoundly negative effect on our city, from cutting off our waterfront, severing our neighborhoods, and scarring our homestead parks and parkway system. Robert Moses did a lot of damage in New York, but he did even more damage in Buffalo. Today, 52% of downtown Buffalo's land use is devoted to parking cars as opposed to supporting the life and vibrancy that you would expect in an urban environment. Buffalo and beautiful Lake Erie, and you can't even see Lake Erie from Buffalo because of all the roads. The Sheridan was built through the South Bronx in the first place because the health and quality of life of people there was thought not to be important. It only has about 40,000 cars a day. It just connects to other free, the Cross Bronx and the Bruckner. There's a lot of people in the neighborhood that are worried about children and their asthma and the air quality, and they want their neighborhood back. They've been living in the shadow of that freeway Unlike some of the other cities where highways have been removed, in those cases, oftentimes elevated highway structures have been converted into boulevards. In this case, the Sheridan sits on the ground. It comes out. There's a local street right next to it that becomes the main street of a new development of 1,500 units of affordable housing, 10 acres of open space. and a network of pathways and walkways that reconnects the existing communities to each other and to the river that they've been cut off from this whole time. So when you need it the most, 
the grade separation doesn't even work for what it's supposed to do, which is move traffic quickly. It's important to review grade separated highway system and consider removing it because your city will be worth more if you get rid of it.